Ah yes, ferrocerium, the word all survival instructors are scared to say. Ferro comes from the word iron, don't ask why. Cerium comes from the word cerium, very easy to see why. So ferrocerium rods are what we call fire steel, that's just a brand that makes most of these. Or ferro rods for short, now I know ferro rod means iron rod and that's not technically what we're dealing with here today. But you'll hear ferro rod, fire steel, metal match and if you really want to flex on somebody, or metal from 1903, that was the original name from this when it was invented. Interesting that it was invented the same year that the Wright brothers took heavier than air powered flight very cool all right so what do we have here we have a fire steel and striker which means that we have a hardened steel looks to be a stainless steel here scrapes off a nice piece on here this won't wear out this absolutely will don't worry if this gets grooves in it heck the more gouges you can carve into it the stronger your sparks are going to be and we'll get into that so we have iron cerium lanthanum, magnesium, and other. Now other is comprised of two other metals that are both 4.4%, so you can see 8.8 .8 is two times 4.4. One of them is neodymium. The other one, I'm gonna let you research. The first one to post it in the comments below is gonna get their comment pinned. All right, some things I've heard with the fire steel is people calling it flint. It is not flint. Flint is no way, shape, or form involved in the making of this metal. Flint was the predecessor prior to 1903 uh, way of starting fires. And there's a few other ways out there. We'll get into them in other videos. A flint and steel spark uses the flint to carve off that high carbon steel and create an 800 degree burning piece of carbon. The fire steel, the ferro rod, it will burn at up to 5,430 degrees Fahrenheit, approximately. So we're looking at clearly six and almost seven times stronger uh, of a spark and a lot more of them when you do it properly. Another term I've heard for this is magnesium. It is not magnesium. Yes, I see right here, I wrote it, 4.4% magnesium, that is accurate. But because these are commonly attached to the Coleman magnesium bar on the keychain uh, that you can get at Walmart for like $5, uh, because they're commonly attached to that, people think of them as a magnesium fire starter. Now, magnesium is an awesome way to start a fire. It's even hotter spark than what we have here. When you carve off some of that magnesium and then light it with some shavings of the ferro rod, it is an excellent way as a to use a... Uh, to start a fire using that magnesium as a primary tinder. Now we'll define primary and secondary tinders in another episode. The one we're gonna be using here today is going to be pitch wood. Now when I say pitch wood or pitch pine, I'm referring to this. This is pine that has been super saturated with sap or pitch. Uh, there's a lot of different names for this and a lot of great ways to use this as a fire starter. It'll suffice to say that because it's super saturated in sap and is dried to a point where it's easily lit, that this can be carved down into an easy fire starter for us. You'll notice some of the smoke coming off of here is black. That's because it has so much unburnt fuel in it that it's actually polluting the air around it. Uh, this is a naturally occurring thing, but a very volatile and very highly flammable tinder, which is why I'll be using it here today. Now I'm gonna do another show where I show 10 or 15 different types of tinder out there. We'll show the pros and cons to each one. This just happens to be the one that I have nearby and the one that I like to use. So I'm going to take it and just shave off some shavings very easily off the side. And no, I will not be using the lighter on this. I'm actually gonna show you the ferro rod techniques. I've got two different ones that I can show you here today. We'll start off with the striker itself, which is this striker that's attached to the lanyard. Now I've never had much success with this striker. Yes, you can carve off sparks and it works, but it's always been restricted in movement. I've been restricted by my own knuckles on the ground here. Uh, so I find that it's a little bit easier if I use my own knife to carve off into this tinder. I'm gonna separate into two piles and try two different techniques here. The first one is my preferred method, where I place the 
the uh, ferrule rod right down into the tinder and I'm carving off a little piece. Now, the first few strokes here, I won't have much carved off. It's just going to be a little bit of shaving. It'll be bright in color. It looks almost like magnesium, but as we discussed earlier, it is not only. And then I'm going to take a harder and harder strike until I can get some sparks onto the tinder. Now, if I'm having particularly difficult tinder, which I didn't today, I'm gonna dig deeper and harder and get hotter and hotter sparks until it goes up. This works really well for me, just digging hard, hot sparks consistently to create that fire. Now, this was a little bit dry or a little bit wetter and I need to dry it out. I could do that with these hot sparks by continuing to go until it lit. If it's for the purpose of survival, I'm not worried that I'm wearing this out a little bit quicker. I need a fire at that point to live. All right, put this out for now. I'll show you the alternate method. Now this method is not one that I'm a big fan of. It does work really nicely. If you don't have a lot of knife control, you wanna place your knife down like this, pull it in nice and tight, and you're just going to drag the metal match across this. This is nice because it creates a little spark shield here. It keeps all of these sparks right onto the tinder at the base of the knife, but I don't like having the knife pointing up and my fingers near it personally. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take some nice easy strokes and go a little harder, a little harder, until I'm happy with the sparks that are coming down off the side of this. See I'm still having a little bit of trouble there. There's a lots of shavings here, so when it goes it's going to sparkle a lot. And you can see where that one's a little harder to work with, thus why it's not my favorite. Whereas when you're doing the other method I showed earlier, you can have a little bit more control and really pinpoint where you want your sparks to be. All right, as I said earlier, we're going to be doing a lot more firecraft. We're gonna be showing you a lot of different ways that we can use this, um, this technique, a lot of different tinders, but I wanted to focus today on what we're using, what it's made of, some common myths, how to use it so that when we get into the tinder show and into the firecraft lessons after this, we can just burn right through this portion, no pun intended, and just get right to the actual fire itself. If you enjoyed the content here today, please check out any of our other videos, leave a comment below, like, subscribe, anything that you do that helps our channel is greatly appreciated. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.